hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and I'm super excited to be here with you today, studying the words of Christ's chosen leaders, so let's get right into it. Today, we're going to talk about President Nelson's talk um, from the very end of the Sunday morning session called over the oh sorry overcome the world and find rest um this talk is a little bit longer so this episode will probably be a little bit longer although i've said that before and it ends up being like 25 minutes but i think i have a lot to say about this talk so just to prepare you (laughs) it'll probably be a little bit longer also um there's a lot in this talk that connects to other talks in this conference and also other talks in last conference in um, April of 2022 conference. So there's going to be a lot of connections and a lot of of things like that um, that I'm super excited to talk about. Um, And also just like like recaps of everything that President Nelson really has ever talked about in the last five years of being a prophet, the prophet. So we're going to jump right in. Well, um, as usual, <laughs> I encourage you to listen to or read this talk before you come listen to me talk about it, especially since I won't be able to read. Um, I'm going to try not to read as many like super long quotes. And because this is longer, I I won't be able to cover as much of it as I want. Um, otherwise, the ta- this, this episode would go on for like two hours <laughs> and I don't want to do that. So definitely read it and come back um, with your own inspiration, your own questions, your own further study desires. Um, hopefully, maybe I can I can add to that, ask questions you might not have thought of. So he starts out by like greeting everybody and um, excuse me, sorry. One of the first things he says is I love you and Heavenly Father and His Son Jesus Christ love you. And they're very aware of you, they're very aware of where you are and what you need and the prayers that you are saying to them. And he says this pretty much right off the bat. Um, He says, experiencing their love is vital as it seems that we are accosted daily by an onslaught of sobering news You may have had days when you wished you could don your pajamas, curl up in a ball, and ask someone to awaken you when the turmoil is over. But, my dear brothers and sisters, so many wonderful things are ahead. In coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power that the world has ever seen. Between now and the time he returns with power and great glory, he will bestow countless privileges, blessings, and miracles upon the faithful. And I just love so much about these couple of paragraphs. Um, first is that that's very relatable <laughs> to want to like curl up in your pajamas and like never come out. Um, you know, there are more days than not that I, I wake up to horrible news, right? About natural disasters and man-made disasters and wars and horrible acts of violence. Um, And there are definitely days when I just want to delete Instagram and throw my phone in the creek behind my house (laughs) and, like, never have one again. Um, But then he counteracts that with this beautiful, so many wonderful things are ahead. And this promise that, you know, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power. Um... And I think that's also true. It's it's really easy to be swept up in all of the bad. I do it every day. There are there was a day just a couple of days ago. I woke up and I was not having it. I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed and my anxiety was high and I just felt really weird. And I was like, I don't want to do anything. I uh, all I'm seeing is the bad. All I'm seeing is all of these this contention, this negative things, and all this fighting. And I just want to stop. Um. And I have my own coping mechanisms for what I do when days are like that. But um, but it can be really easy to just 
get caught up in all of the horrible things and it's easy to miss the good things that are also happening in the world. There's an account that I follow um, on, on Instagram. She breaks down political things into like really understandable language, which is really helpful, um, especially when I started to really like get interested in politics. Um, not interested, but like trying to understand it, trying to understand what Congress actually does. <laughs> and, you know, outside of what I learned in school and the actual bills and policies that they're looking at. But you read about these things and you're like, man, that is like, it's a 96 page document and it's all legal politicky jar jargon that I don't understand. And I don't understand the history of it and like why it matters and whatever. And so she does a really good job of breaking those things down um, into very understandable things. But um, last year at some point, she started doing Good News Sundays. And so once a week, she puts together a post about the good things going on in the world. And her whole point was she was like, I know my account gets really heavy. I know the world gets really heavy. And so only seeing all these complicated, like, very emotionally charged things um, and just straight up bad things can get really heavy and really grating. And so she was like, I want to make sure that I'm pointing out the good things that are happening, the, the strides that are being made. So sometimes it's about like laws that were passed, bills that were passed. Sometimes it's about nonprofit organizations that are doing amazing things or, you know, an event that was a really big deal. Um, that you might not see because they're overshadowed by all the bad things. And that's also just like life. <laughs> bad things make better news, right? <laughs> um, they catch your attention more. And so often that's, that's more of what you, what you see. Um, but I think it's super important to see both things to recognize the bad that's in the world. Um, and in your life and in the church and in just everything but also to really recognize the, the good and the good people also that's super important to me is seeing the good people that are that are trying their best they're doing what they can to to make the world a better place and make people's lives a better make people's lives better uh, i also think it's interesting he uses the phrase in coming days um and what does that sound like <laughs> that sounds like the quote um the very very famous quote and i'm gonna find it because i want to read it like word for word um So this was in, yeah, this is a, President Nelson's very first conference as prophet, April 2018. This is his very first talk that he gave in a conference, I believe. Let me check that. Okay, he, he gave a talk in the general priesthood session. Um in that April conference, but this was his first, like, talk in general session of general conference. Revelation for the church, revelation for our lives. In coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. And I've pointed this out before, but how many times has that quote been quoted? How many times has that quote been said over and over and over again in general conferences, in social media posts by general authorities, in literally everything, right? How many times have we heard that in the last five years? Um, and it's been five years. It's literally been five years since he became prophet. Um, and so I thought it was interesting that he uses that same phrase, in coming days, we will see the greatest manifestation of the Savior's power the world has ever seen. And that's such a juxtaposition, right? Those are like kind of two not completely opposite ideas, 
but kind of opposite vibes. <laughs> There's incoming days will not be possible to survive spiritually without the Holy Ghost. Also, in coming days, we will see the greatest manifestations of the Savior's power the world has ever seen. And I think also those things are linked. Um, that as we have the Holy Ghost in our lives, as we have a personal relationship with the Savior, with God, we, we know how we personally receive revelation. We're working on that all the day, all the time. We're working on that process. We're using that process every day. That we're also going to we're going to see the savior's power in the world um we're going to see those manifestations um and i'm sure we're going to help bring about we are the savior's hands on the earth so i think it's really interesting um also reminded me of the phrase that's used a lot in the book of mormon and it came to pass or and it will come to pass often those are prophecies by prophets um that then come to pass <laughs> um later on they say and it came to pass just as lehi said or just as jerem's jared said um or just as jacob said sorry not jared thinking of nephi's brother they all start with j it's it's hard you know just as he said it came to pass um and so looking back on the last five years one of all the changes that have been made to help us have a personal relationship with Christ, have a process of our personal revelation, the whole Hear Him initiative, uh, Come Follow Me, ministering, the new children and youth program. And I, I've talked about this a lot, right? Um, all the changes that have been made to facilitate and help facilitate the members to have their own personal revelation and to have their own testimony, their own personal testimony of God and of Christ. Um, so we see that, obviously, he, he, he's like, okay, this is, this is a problem. Here's all the things we're going to do to try and help that problem. Um, and also everything that's happened that we needed that. The, the global pandemic. We didn't have church. <laughs> You do not have physical meeting of church. Um, you gotta do it all by yourself in your home. And that included Come Follow Me, and that included really needing ministering to help make sure everybody was still alive. And they had everything they needed. Um, and also just all of the craziness that's happened since then, all of the political upheaval, all of the, whether it's national, you know, within countries and also global political upheaval um the just everything that's going on in the world where you need to have that personal relationship and the personal connection with god to know what's right in your life for you going forward to make that next step that next right thing and so i just think it's really interesting that he uses that phrase again in coming days um that just like and it will come to pass like this is a prophetic thing um this is a this is a i think we should pay attention to this is what i'm trying to say um and to look for those greatest manifestations of the savior's power in the world very cool um so yeah so that's kind of how he starts but then he says of course but also at the same time, we are living in a very complicated time in history. This is a complicated place. Earth is complicated. <laughs> Life is complicated. Um, and so he shares this story about uh, during the Washington DC Temple open house, they had a big renovation, they had an open house. And one of the open house committee members was giving a tour uh, for journalists. And one of the journalists kept asking about the journey. He kept using this, this word journey through the temple and how it was metaphorical of a person's journey through life and um somehow there was a family that kind of like lumped in with this media tour um <laughs> and he he says this a young boy in the family picked up on the conversation when the tour group entered an endowment room the boy pointed to the altar where people kneel to make covenants with God and said, oh, that's nice. There's a place for people to rest on their temple journey. 
And one, I just want to point out that I love when kids make such profound statements and you're just like, whoa. Um, I've talked about before, I was a primary teacher up until just a couple of weeks ago for like six or seven months. And then right before that, for a few months, I was a youth Sunday school teacher. And I loved both of those calling so much because kids surprise you with how much they know and how much they understand and how much they connect things that are like super simple for them even in this um conference who was it that talked about their their nephew i think it was their nephew um who you know, he asked, he's like, oh, how did you get so smart? And he was like, you know, the answer to that, the answer is Jesus. I got that smart because of Jesus. And what seems so profound to us as adults who everything is complicated and we tend to complicate everything, even things that are super simple, like the answer is Jesus, right? Um, um, that it's nice it's sometimes nice to be around kids who are just like well because jesus loves you or oh that's nice there's a place for people to rest on their journey um or another example so i was teaching you sunday school and we were talking about idols um with like the golden calf and you know why idols are bad and i was like we don't have you know idols in our house right we don't usually have a calf or sheep in our living room that we bow to but what are things that we idolize <clears throat> so we went through the list of, you know, money and power and technology, things that we put above God. And one of the girls raised her hand, she's probably like 13, and she was like, ourselves? And I was like, and I stood there for a hot second, and I was like, yeah, and that is called pride. <laughs> like, that absolutely, um, and it really blew my mind, because I'm thinking of, you know, external things. I'm thinking about, um... And I think also she talked about like an other people. We idolize other people and we put celebrities or influences or influencers or even like people in our inner circle, in our family and our friends, we put above ourselves, we put above God and we idolize them. Um, and I just like, it blew my mind. I was like, wow, she is so right. Um, so anyway, so I love that he's like this, this little kid and their, their innocence and their simplicity, their simple faith of a child. Um, and I think, um, I'm just gonna throw this in there <laughs> because I'm already off topic. Um, you know, when Christ starts to become like a little child, not ignorant, not, you know, pushed around by people, but like, but the simplicity of their faith, the, the simplicity of because God loves me, I will love other people. Um, I think that's what he's talking about to become as a little child. <clears throat> and they don't realize, and that's what <laughs> President Nelson goes on to say. He's like, I doubt that he knew how profound that was. I doubt that he knew that there was a direct connection between making covenants and the Savior's promise that as we come unto him, we will find rest. Um... And so he, he says that he's like every, every person who makes covenants, whether through baptism or in the temple, um, you know, endowments, initiatories, ceilings, um, have an increased access to the power of Christ. And that's also been a big theme for him, for President Nelson as a prophet in the last five years, has been... Um, covenants and the power of the priesthood and that we have access to the priesthood, the power of God through our covenants. Um, I think that's, that's kind of changed the way that we talk about the priesthood and the way that we understand the priesthood. Um, he had that whole talk, Spiritual Treasures, from October 2019. Um, and I remember where I was sitting. It was in the Women's Conference. 
Um, I remember where I was sitting, I was on my mission, I remember where I was when I heard that talk, and it blew my mind. Um, because that's not how we really talked about the priesthood before that, or at least that's not how I was taught about the priesthood. And so to hear men and women have access to the power of God in their lives through covenants, through personal revelation with God. Um, and so that's kind of a really big deal for him, and that's why temples have been such a big deal for him of having the place where those covenants ordinances are performed to give us access better access to god and christ so <laughs> um so that's kind of his whole thesis this whole thing in his talk is that as we come closer to christ as we become more like him as we make covenants all of that we can find rest um, so, and that, that's this, this quote, it's kind of long, but it kind of really sums up everything that he's saying in this talk, so I'm going to read, kind of, going to read all of it. Um, he says, dear, my dear brothers and sisters, my message to you today is that because Jesus Christ overcame this fallen world, and because he atoned for each of us, you too can overcome this sin-saturated, self-centered, and often exhausting world. Because the Savior, through his infinite atonement, redeemed each of us from weakness, mistakes, and sin, and because he experienced every pain, worry, and burden you have ever had, then as you truly repent and seek his help, you can rise above this present precarious world. You can overcome the spiritually and emotionally exhausting plagues of the world, including arrogance, pride, anger, immorality, hatred, greed, jealousy, and fear. Despite the distractions and distortions that swirl around us, you can find true rest, meaning relief and peace, even amid, amid your most vexing problems. And there's a lot that I love about these three paragraphs. Um, like a lot. <laughs> um, but they kind of fall under two major points that he's making here. And I want to harken back to um, President Lund's talk from a couple episodes ago, Lasting Discipleship, where he says this, he says, finding joy in this world of prophesied disruption without becoming part of that world with its blind spot toward holiness is their particular charge. And he was specifically talking about the youth. Um, but I talked about it in that episode, and I'll talk about it again. How much I love how he phrased that quote. Um, because I talked about the phrase that we normally use, uh, be in the world, but not of the world. And how, I don't know how long that's been around. I don't know how long, you know, where that comes from specifically. Um, but in my experience, um, it's becomes, it, it is so used that it has kind of lost some of its meaning. Um, as a lot of phrases do, right? There's a lot of things that we say over and over and so much that they tend to lose a little bit of, it, of their meaning um and so and and in this case i think we often focus so much on the second part that we forget about the first part or we kind of disregard as like yeah we're in the world because we have to be we can't be of the world we have to be better than the world and often also i think we look at the world as people um and that i can i think can be really damaging and, and really dangerous because then we look at people as 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 evil we look at people as they are the problem um and then we stop associating with people outside of the church or outside of our little bubble we we stop loving people not necessarily loving them but like we stop we stop seeing them as God's children. We stop. We see them as the world. We see them as an other. It's a very us versus them mentality um, that can be really dangerous because then that us versus them is just never. That's never good, right? <laughs> that dichotomy and you know splitting of of you know we think we're better than them. Um, we're rising above them, right? And so when we lump in people with the world or as the world. Um, we can, we can sometimes, we can become very arrogant and sometimes we can become very 
mean and um, hateful and um, fearing of people who are other than us. Um, when in reality, the world, as he says a little bit later, he says the the spiritually and sorry spiritually and emotionally exhausting plagues of the world, and he lists arrogant arrogance, pride, anger, immortality. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's a really close word. Immorality, hatred, greed, fear, and jealousy. And those are things that everybody has. Those are things that President Nelson has. I'm sure that he has been arrogant or prideful or angry or hateful or greedy or jealous or or afraid at some point in his life probably today he's felt something like that it's a very those are very human things to feel and so that's why i love the word overcome that it's okay that we feel those things it's okay that we experience those things because we are human we are in a fallen world but overcoming those and you know remembering that you know, we are not better than other people, um, that we should not be afraid because God has our back and we should not be jealous because we are also awesome. We are also children of God. Um, and so I just love the way that he talks about that and that, that, but also as a reminder that like the people aren't the problem, that those attributes of people are the problem. Um, and that we're all still sons and daughters of God, that we're all still children of God. Um, and so the world that we're overcoming is not other people, it's the sins of the world, it's the self-centeredness. And as, as President Lund put it, um, prophesied disruption. <laughs> um, and it's blind spot toward holiness. Um, which I just love those kind of, those modifiers of being like, the world is not people, but the things that people do, the actions that people take, um, and the way that people treat others. And so the second thing is that overcoming, how do you overcome that? Um, as he says, that last line at the end says, despite the distraction distortions that swirl around us, you can find true rest, meaning relief and peace, even amid your most vexing problems. Um, sorry, I'll make sure that I, okay, make sure that I was on the right, on the right track. So this, I think, harkens back to a lot of the, that he talked about in April of 2022 conference, a major theme in April of 22 conference, 2022 conference was peace. Um, and if you are an OG general conference conversations listener, um, you'll remember <laughs> that I talked a lot about peace um, in those early episodes because there were multiple talks about that had peace in the name. President Nelson's talk talked about peace. Um, and it was great. Um, and I talked about this thing that one of my good friends said years ago that I think about to this day. Um, and I've, I tell everybody that I possibly can when I come to the conversation because it has changed the way that I think about life. Um, and he said that peace is not an emotion, it's a state of being that you can be at peace um, and happy. You can be at peace and sad. You can be at peace and angry. You can be at peace and afraid. You can be at peace and jealous. Um, that those things can coexist. And that has really changed the way that I think about life <laughs> and the world and myself. Because by giving yourself permission to say it's okay that I'm jealous right now because I just I feel jealous and you know it's okay to feel those things are actually healthy to feel those emotions to process those emotions then to release those emotions and in releasing those emotions you feel peace and 
you you feel that peace you can release those emotions because you have faith in christ you have faith that he and god have got your back that everything's going to work out in the end um so for example you can be really upset about something that's happening or not happening in the way that you want it to be happening but you can have the peace that god and christ have plans for you and your life and that if something's not working out the way you want it to or it is working out not the way that you want it to um you can still you can be upset about that <laughs> be really mad and tell god all of your problems and he's gonna say don't worry i've got your back i've got a plan and it's all gonna work out and i have so many i have so many <laughs> um examples of this a very simple one was when i was going on my mission um i my plan i had it all planned out <clears throat> i was very much a planner i still am but like even more so uh before my mission um i uh, <laughs> i've talked about i have anxiety and my anxiety likes to know what's happening it likes to have a plan um and when the plan changes it, it doesn't like that and so i had like the the next five years of my life planned basically um before i even left on my mission i like my plan was to go to byu after my mission which didn't end up happening because i met my husband <laughs> whole other story but um um but i had like my major planned out i had like i looked i'd researched into so many things and like i had a plan i had my i had my five-year plan um currently i do not have a five-year plan i should put it that way <laughs> i've changed a lot i've grown a lot um so my plan was so i i had finished my associate's degree i had just gotten back from a study abroad trip i was going to work over the summer to pay off some stuff to save up money for my mission and then I was going to put my papers in and leave in September. That was or around September. That was like my goal. I didn't start my papers until September. And then, so my bishop was brand new. He'd only been bishop for like three or four months and his daughter was in the hospital. So it was really hard to get into him, like to, to schedule a meeting with him. Totally understandable. Uh, I had to have a wisdom to tooth taken out, just one. I had to get into my doctor. I had to like do all these things that took way longer than I expected. It took like four or five months. Um, part of that was just my ignorance of like how long it was gonna take for me to put my papers in. So I didn't end up submitting my papers until like the week after Christmas. Um, and then I didn't get my call until February and I didn't leave until April. So it was over six months after I had planned on leaving, right? And in that time, like looking back, I definitely needed that time to save money and to prepare more for my mission. But also, um, in that, you know, six months was really frustrating because I was like, but this is the time, this is the time you told me I needed to leave. Um, and I'm not leaving. I'm not getting this done the way that I, the, 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 the way that I thought it was going to be the speed that I thought it was going to be. And, but also always in the back of my mind and what I was, you know, reminded of is like, you're going to go out at the time that God needs you to go out. You're going to be sent to the place that God needs you. You're going to leave the time that, that you need to leave for your, for your personal mission journey, for your life's journey. Um, and so while I was still really frustrated and also in this like limbo waiting period, which was also really hard for me because I wasn't like doing anything. I wasn't going to school. I was, I was, I was working. Um, and that was pretty much it. And I was like, oh, twiddling my thumbs because I don't want to like start anything, but then have to like leave in the middle of it. It was just really rough. And so, um, and also people were expecting me to like leave on a mission and I still hadn't left yet and I didn't have anything to tell them and like it was just it was a lot but at the same time I had that kind of piece of like I'm gonna go when I'm gonna go and I had to be okay with that um and looking back I needed to enter the MTC on April 3rd 2019 um 
I needed to be in that MTC group, my NTC district, and I got, we got super close. I'm still super close with all the sisters that I roomed with. Um, we were a family, and I needed to enter the Arizona Mesa mission um, three weeks later, and, you know, the, the timing with which I was with, with that I was with each of my companions, the timing that I met my husband, the timing that I met people that I was teaching, the districts that I was in, the areas I was in, I always needed to be in those time in those areas at those times. Um, and and then since then, that's all so all happened. <laughs> and I learned on my mission, I still plan, I still make goals, I still, you know, I have, especially projects that I'm working on, like general conference, like this, like this podcast, for example, um, I, when conference happens in October, I looked at all the talks and I scheduled them all out on my calendar so that I knew when I needed to record them and when I wanted to have them posted. And then I got sick in December. I wanted to have all of the Saturday afternoon session, or was it Saturday evening session? Um, Saturday afternoon session finished before Christmas, and I was going to take a couple take a couple weeks break. And then I got sick. Um, if you remember, uh, if you watch all of my or listen to all of my stuff, um, I did. I believe. Let me check my my thingy. So I did. What was it? Okay, so I did Elder Zabias talk um, on December sixteenth. It was posted, and then I wanted to do Elder Christofferson's talk. I think it was the next Monday, I believe. And so Elder Zabias talk. I was starting to get sick. My husband was already sick, and I was starting to get sick. And so I like recorded it really quickly, and I was like, "I'm sorry if I cough. I'm sorry if like my voice is going out." And I recorded that on like a Wednesday or a Thursday and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to be sick this weekend and then I'm going to be fine and by Monday I can record the next one. I'm going to record Elder Christopherson's talk. That was not the case. I didn't go to church that Sunday and then we were sick for like two weeks, um, which was kind of good because it forced us to like rest leading up to the holidays and like the last couple weeks of the year was just like kind of relaxing, which was nice. But then, but I had to change my plan. I had to move it. I moved um, Elder Chris Harperson's talk to January. I didn't record it until January. It wasn't posted until January 3rd. It wasn't a bad thing, but like it changed my plan. Um, and so I learned that a lot as a missionary that I had to, I could make plans, but that God was probably going to change them and that was okay. And so I had that piece, I developed that faith in the fact that even though I was really frustrated that like a plan changed or somebody canceled, that something else was going to fill it out that was just as important or more so. Um, and so that's what peace is. That's the, the uh, even amidst your most vexing problems, even while you're in the middle of something so frustrating, I still, right now, there are things that I'm really frustrated about and I'm really scared about and I'm really worried about. We don't have a five-year plan. That terrifies me. <laughs> I, ah, um, I'm still like a sort of a newlywed. We've only been married for just over a year. And so like marriage still scares me, but I have that peace and I have that faith that, that God's got my back. And so I have that peace of like, hey, everything's going to work out. Even while I'm sitting here terrified and my anxiety is freaking out because I don't have a five-year plan. So anyway, <laughs> that's, I really love, those are kind of, and that like encapsulates a lot of what he's been talking about for the last five years of like, as you have that connection with Christ, as you have your own personal revelation, you have process that you collaborated on with the Holy Ghost as a connection to God in Christ, as you come closer to God in Christ, you will have more rest. You will be able to have that faith um, that everything's going to work out okay. Um, and so that's his whole like dealio, this whole talk. So he goes on to talk about two questions. What does it mean to overcome the world and how do we do it? Um, 
And these things are kind of things he's already talked about, but he has kind of specific um, like definitions, more specific about this. And so he says this as his like definition of what it means to overcome the world. He says, it means overcoming the temptation to care more about the things of this world than the things of God. It means trusting the doctrine of Christ more than the philosophies of men. It means delighting in truth, denouncing deception, and becoming humble followers of Christ. It means choosing to refrain from anything that drives the spirit away. It means being willing to give away even our favorite sins. Um, and I mean, that's literally what he's been talking about this whole time. That's what we've been talking about this whole time is the things of the world. Those, that, that arrogance and deception and, and lying and, um, anger and fear and hatred and overcoming of those and, and overcoming the temptation to care about. I like that. I like how he phrases that overcoming the temptation to care more about those things and things of God. Um, because like I said, we're going to feel those things. We're human, but overcoming the temptation to like give in to your rage <laughs> and give in to your arrogance, um, feeling those and being like, oh, okay, I, I acknowledge that I feel that, but I'm going to be better than that. I'm going to move past that. Um, so I like the way that he phrases that also. And then how we overcome the world, he basically says, every time you seek for and follow the promptings of the spirit, every time you do anything good, you're overcoming the world. And that's so, one, powerful, hopeful, and like, I love that. Like, we are all overcoming the world every single day. We are choosing to follow promptings of the spirit we're choosing to seek promptings from the spirit to seek revelation we're we're choosing to do things that are good and we're like noteworthy what's that word noteworthy i'm trying to think of the 13th 13th article of my face i never um I never memorized them, so <laughs> like of good report, praiseworthy. That's the word I'm looking for. Not worth, not not noteworthy, <laughs> praiseworthy. Um, that that's that's what you're doing. You're doing that, um, and so I love that. He's like, it's very simple. That you are you're you're seeking and following revelation, and you're doing good things to get. You're overcoming the world, um, and then. He says this also. Um, Please do not misunderstand me. I did not say that making covenants makes life easy. In fact, expect opposition because the adversary does not want you to discover the power of Jesus Christ. But yoking yourself with the Savior means you have access to his strength and redeeming power. And that is something that has also been a big theme this conference is one, the necessity of trials, um, the inevitability of trials, like they are going to be there just because um, even like the one guy, and I can't remember who said this, that like our knowledge and our beliefs don't make us better than other people. It doesn't mean that we're just like, it doesn't make us better. It doesn't make mean that we're not gonna have hard things happen. Um, but in, in having our beliefs and in having our peace, or in having our faith, we can find peace. Um, and we have access to the strength and redeeming power of the Savior. We have help. And so um, I think I've kind of asked, I've asked variations of this question before, but I wanted to kind of ask it again, is how have you found rest in your trials or strength in your trials with the help of Christ? Um, and I've, I just gave an example of that. Um, and this is kind of, I mean, this is something we, we talk about a lot, right? This is the, the kind of the point of the gospel <laughs> is that through Christ, we have are strengthened in our trials. But I want you to really think about that again. Take a moment again to remember stories that you have in your life, experiences that you have in your life where you were given rest or strength in your trials because of Christ. 
Um, and I just gave examples, so I won't kind of give my own example, but. <clears throat> so he then talks about a, um, he, uh, a young adult devotional that he gave in May, which I believe we've talked about before. I've given as a, a further study before. Um, that I watched. I watched it in May. Um, it was really good. He, sorry, lost my train of thought. He says, I urge them then, and I plead with you now, to take charge of your own testimony of Jesus Christ and his gospel. Work for it. Nurture it so that it will go and feed it truth. And, um, again, this is just something, again, that he's saying over and over and over again. Have your own testimony. Seek your own testimony. Seek your own personal revelation. Seek your own relationship with Christ. And so, um, I didn't want to just ask, how can you do this? Because that can be a really overwhelming question. What is one step you can take to do this? to take charge of your own testimony, to work for it, nurture it, and feed it truth. What's one thing that you can do? Whether it's one thing you do every day, one thing you do every week. I talked about a couple of episodes ago, or maybe this last episode, I don't remember. I'm very open with the fact that I don't read my scriptures every day. Um, it's just not something that works for me. Um, it actually makes me very stressed out trying to like read scriptures every day. I feel like I'm like, I, I don't feel fulfilled. <laughs> Not always. Sometimes I, I do read more than once a week. But what I've started doing this year is I get up um, a little bit early on Sundays. And I can do this because we have 11 o'clock church and I don't have kids. So, like, obviously it's not going to work for everybody. But I get up a little bit earlier on Sunday mornings and I do come follow me for the week. Or I do come follow me for the, for the past week or the previous or following week. However, like, wherever I'm at, come follow me. Um, I sit and I do my come follow me for the week. And I also bring my Bible with me to Sunday school, or sorry, to sacrament meeting. And to Sunday school, but like to sacrament meeting. And read also during sacrament meeting. That works for me. Um, and that's like how I am feeding my testimony. This is also feeding my testimony for me. I, I get to sit and talk about general conference for a couple of hours a week. Um, that also feeds my testimony and nurtures my testimony and it's a lot of work. <laughs> so like, what is one thing that you can do? What is one thing that was, it's going to work for you? And that doesn't mean like one more thing, you know, work smarter, not harder. Maybe you change something that you do. Maybe instead of, you know, reading your scriptures every morning, you read a general conference talk every morning or, um, Maybe you change the time of day that you do your scripture study. Maybe five o'clock in the morning just is not, you're not getting anything out of it. Maybe you do it during lunch or, you know, you take a snack break at three o'clock and you read your scriptures then. Like maybe that's the time that works for you. Um, you know, when, when our church time changes, I'm not going to get up at seven o'clock in the morning to read my scriptures. It's just not going to happen. So I'm going to have to change that time that I have for my come follow me, but right now that's what works for me. So yeah, what what's one step that you can do to, to, to do this, to to take charge of your testimony? I like that, to take charge of it, to like, it's it's yours to be in charge of it, to, to, um, to really work at it and grow it. Um, and so he, we're getting to the end of the talk. He says, he talks about, like, his plea is to, for us to find rest, to, to overcome the world through our covenants of God. Um, and he gives a couple of suggestions that I think are really good. Um, oops. He says, let him know, sorry about God obviously <laughs> let him know through your prayers and your actions that you are serious about overcoming the world ask him to enlighten your mind and send the help you need each day record the thoughts that come to you as you pray then follow through diligently spend more time in the temple and seek to understand how the temple teaches you to rise above this fallen world um and then 
he gives this really powerful prophetic invitation and promise um which is just so powerful it's the thing that he ends with and so i'm gonna read it also he says i call upon you my dear brothers and sisters to become this righteous people cherish and honor your covenants above all other commitments as you let god prevail in your life i promise you to you greater peace confidence joy and yes rest with the power of the holy apostleship vested in me i bless you with your quest to overcome this world i bless you to increase your faith in jesus christ and learn how to draw upon his power i bless you to be able to discern truth from error i bless you to care more about the things of god and things of this world I bless you to see the needs of those around you and strengthen those you love. Because Jesus over Jesus Christ overcame this world, you can too. Prophetic invitation, promise, and blessing. <laughs> like, that is so, so cool. Um, and to think about, like, he's giving you a prophetic blessing. Like, to imagine President Nelson laying his hands on your head and blessing you with these things. With blessing you in your quest to overcome the world to increase your faith in christ to discern truth from error to care more about things of god to see the needs of those around you and like a reminder that like because jesus christ overcame this world you can too so i just think that's super cool um that that's our it has invitation is to overcome the world to become a righteous people um and that as we do that we will find rest and then he blessed us with how to do that. And I just think that's so cool. I love Bruce Nelson. Anyway. <laughs> so I just thought this was a very powerful talk. Um, and it, it, it pulls in so many things. And this is probably my longest episode I've ever done. It really is. Um, because it pulls in so many things. Things that he has taught us for the last five years. Things that other general authorities have taught us for the last five years. Um... And I'm sure his whole apostleship, but like I'm more tuned in because in the last five years I've actually been paying attention. <laughs> I'll admit it. Um, but it's very powerful and it's just so, so chock full. And that's why I said like read it yourself. And 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 the, I did not read all of it. There's so much that I didn't read. There's so much in here. It's so chock full of like amazing things um so please definitely read all of it and like maybe you're gonna be attracted to a different paragraph than I was um but I'm gonna recap my questions just really quickly um one was sorry I lost them that's awkward really awkward oh uh, yeah how have you found rest in your trials with the help of Christ and then um what's one step you can take to ch take charge of your testimony of christ and then my further readings for you i don't want these in mm -hmm. so what i wrote down specifically was um the young adult devotional i mentioned earlier uh choices for eternity from May of 2022. Um, I also mentioned a lot of other talks in this talk. <laughs> um, uh, uh, President Lund's talk from, it's just a couple talks before this in the Sunday morning session. Um, also President Nelson's talk, Spiritual Treasures from October of 29, or yeah, tw October of 2019. And then Revelation for the Church, Revelation for Our Lives from April of 2018, also by President Nelson. Um, I'm sure I'm missing ones that I talked about, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. So, um, but yes, this is such a good talk and um, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in the coming days. <laughs> and I'm excited to yeah, prepare more for April conference and see what happens then is super exciting so that's all i've got for you today but thank you so much for watching and or listening to this episode of general conference conversations i am 
so grateful for people who watch. <laughs> um, be sure to follow and share general conference conversations on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you like this show, please subscribe if you're on YouTube or follow or add whatever on your podcatcher of choice. Leave a review, tell your friends. I really appreciate it. Um, it helps me be found and more people can listen to my ramblings. Also, another reminder, as always, of um, the physical study guide that you can purchase that goes along with this podcast if you're looking for something a little bit more tangible or you are getting ready for April General Conference um, in just a couple of months. Um, you can purchase it as a PDF download that you can print yourself or um, as a physical copy that you can have sent to your house. It'll be spiral bound. They're really cool. So the links for that will be in the show notes and the description below. Um, and I'll talk to you all next time. Thank you.